Amen. Why well, don't you praise the Lord? Amen. Can somebody praise the Lord? Amen. I know it's Friday night. You know, man, I'm going all week, right? Amen. Looks like a few other people have been going so much they didn't make it tonight. But, uh, but we're here. Amen. And you know, we're not going to concentrate on, on who didn't make it. We're going to concentrate on those of us that are here. It is good to see you, brother uh, Dan Cooley. Something else. Back in when I first met him, uh, somewhere in the 1970s, uh, he told me coming in tonight that in the 1990 was the last time he'd been in the meeting. But uh, welcome, it was good to have you. We don't have a keyboard, I'd invite you up. You got a, you got a CD or something? No, we'll, we'll bring one next time. We'll bring one All right, one. yeah, sometimes we have a keyboard and sometimes we don't. So, uh, anyhow, uh, we appreciate you being here tonight and uh, we just kind of play it by ear. So, uh, anyhow, we, we, we welcome you tonight. You all have been welcomed. And you always wanted to get all the other stuff. Uh, Cheryl mentioned her book. I wanted to make you know uh, we've got some of them tonight. If you haven't got one of her books, The Just Shall Live by Faith, it is awesome. And uh, so get one before you leave. They're $10 a piece. You can order, uh, order at Amazon.com, but you have to pay shipping and you'll wind up paying more than $10. <laughs> uh, so, anyhow. Yeah. Well, tonight we, we pray with. We've sang, we've worshipped, and uh, you know I've been visiting, and I, I visiting my brother today in the Baptist Hospital, who's in in very serious condition. In fact, when I got there today, uh, and I'm telling you this on purpose because I'm going to ask you to help in just a moment. Uh, you know, I thought, well, I don't want to bring my personal, and this is really not personal. Whenever uh, an attack on any part of the body of Christ comes, uh, the church needs to stand up. Amen. And we need to believe, especially for those that need that need some agreement, need some belief. And uh, so my brother Dennis uh, had already been through a lot of things with throat cancer and surgery and different things. Uh, chemotherapy had been doing years of uh, going through that. But had a, uh, had a stroke uh, this past week and is in the Baptist Hospital right now. And then Lord got there today and uh, uh, they were... They, uh, uh, quick response people were in the room and uh, the oxygen levels were going down and a lot of moving from the room to ICU while I was there. And uh, so, you know, it's been an emotional day uh, as far as that goes. But my faith is high. Uh, and I believe it's time to step in faith. While I was there, though, and while they were moving, uh, setting them up in ICU, they had me to wait in the waiting room. And then they said they'd come and get me, and they did. Um, the time was there. Well, while I was waiting, the uh, 700 Club was on there. And uh, they were playing a, a testimony about uh, a man's wife that was on the verge of death and, and, and all, and they were in a worship service. Somebody said worship service. Worship. See, there's more to worship than just singing. Amen. If all we do is sing, when we come together in a worship service and we don't enter into the presence of the Lord, all we get is sing. We might as well be at a, uh, you know, a Hollywood co conference or a Hollywood uh, whatever, uh, singing convention or whatever. Uh, but whenever we enter in as a body, there's something that begins to happen in the heavens. Amen. There's something that begins to happen uh, and, and so uh, tonight, uh, I want you to do, I, I saw it on there that, that the, the uh, gentleman was, was playing his guitar and he was leading and he just stopped. And he said, can the church just be the church? I'm, I'm borrowing his message. I'm borrowing his stuff because it, it bore witness with me. And so, on the behalf of this man's wife, they begin to worship and they begin to call on the name of the Lord and they begin to, uh, they just begin to uh, enter into the presence of the Lord. And the, the, the lady's husband came and got on his knees and began to worship with him. And then the next scene, the next clip they showed was his wife coming and sitting down by his side. Because God didn't and then it showed four children coming and gathering around them because mom was alive. And 
the testimony was because the church was the church. So will you stand with me? I'm asking you for a favor. Will you stand with me tonight, those of you that can? We've got the kids on the lap, we don't have to, but whatever. Uh, and will you just lift a lift a voice, lift your voice and call on the name of the Lord for Dennis Hutchins tonight? Father, in the name of Jesus, as we enter in together. God, he's not only my brother in the natural, he's my brother in Christ. And I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus, as we worship you tonight, we give it, give you glory. And we thank you, Lord, as we praise you tonight, God, that you move in, in the Wake Forest Baptist Hospital, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and you begin to touch Dennis Hutchins. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you are a God that can restore. We thank you, God, that you are a God that can uh, recover all. And Father, in the name of Jesus here tonight, God, we call on the name of the Lord and we ask you just to do that. And we give you praise for it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's do this little thing together. Hallelujah. Explain it to me. 
You know, in other words, give it to me simple in my, uh, in, in my terms, you know. Uh, sometimes explanations get way up here, but if you explain it to me, just bring it down where I am, uh, then I can begin to understand it. And God said to me that people are no longer going to be satisfied with the mediocre and just the status quo in the church. Hello, folks. In case you haven't noticed it, people are uh, people are being moved by some of the same things they used to be moved with. That's right. I remember the days whenever I was, uh, you know, in in the the revivals and the tents and, and stuff, and, and you could take a ham and organ and you could move a crowd. Uh, you know, <laughs> come on, someone bless the Lord. Uh, and, and I've sat on bleachers one time in, in uh, Huntington, West Virginia, and a brother uh, there listening, he, he leaned over me and said, watch this. And I did a high, high, high moment. He, he just stomped his feet on those bleachers and it just run, and I cried a while shouting. And the Lord said to me, we're not going to move the people uh, the same way we used to move the people. Hello? said, because there's something crying out deeper in them. You know what I'm saying? There's something crying out. Not that we're not going to worship. And I believe in lifting a worship to God. I believe in lifting. We're, we're, I'm not throwing that away. We're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? We're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But see, our, our motives are, are not just to be to have a Hollywood glitter. But our motives now must go deeper. That we begin to touch the body of Christ. And we begin to transform the world. In case you haven't noticed. The world needs a transformation. Yes. Yeah. Come on, there needs to be a transformation of our motives and where, come on, where we need to go, what we need to do. We think, we think being deceitful and fraudful uh, is something that's just been limited uh, to the to the government, the political parties. Can I tell you? Uh, I've seen it in the church. Come on, somebody hear what I'm saying? But see, the people today want more than just what's going to thrill them in their flesh. They want something uh, that's going to begin to change them from the inside out. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And people are tired of saying one thing and, and living another. Yeah. Somebody hear what I'm saying? So here we are in a time whenever we're in transition. And uh, one thing, how do, we, how do we hear the voice of God? Something just flashed in my face, and I'm here. just in case it was old, I'm going to tell you about. It. You ever, you ever seen these old, old uh, movies and all where the, the somebody that was hard to hear, they didn't have hearing aids back then, but they had these horns that stick in their ear. Yeah. Ah, ah. Why'd you say? <laughs> See, and, and I just saw that. See, and and uh, people have become hard of hearing, so it's going to take something. It's going. To, Come on, somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to take something up with some life in it to wake them up. Yeah. And we're going to have to find the level of where people can hear. In Revelation, the fourth chapter and the uh, first verse, uh, it says, After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as, as if it were a trumpet talking with me, and said, Come up here. And I will show you uh, things which must be hereafter. Now, I'm not going to get out of here trying to jump out in, a, in just a deep message over everybody's here, head, but I'm going to tell you that there are some things that we've got to go to a higher level to hear. There are some things, I, I, I'm, I'm just talking about uh, not just another, uh, another revelation. See, I, we've become so, um, especially some of the, the kingdom folk that I've been around and and sonship folk, we've been, become so uh, minded that we've got to get a deep revelation that we miss what the voice of God is really saying. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See, so here, uh, he said, come up hither, John. Because I want to show you something. I want you to hear something on another level. Now, uh, Another, just laying a foundation here. Ezekiel 37 and verse 4. Y'all know it's about the, the, the dry bones. But what he said to, to uh, Ezekiel, what God said to Ezekiel, uh, and when he asked him if he's dry bones will live, he said, Do you know, Lord? And he said, uh, uh, Ezekiel, prophesy. 
prophesy in the word that we miss some of these words sometimes. He said, prophesy upon these bones. And if you look that word up, it's prophesy above these bones. You're not going to bring life into something that's pulled you down in the midst of the line with it. Can you hear what I'm saying? Amen. See, and somehow, uh, I, I don't want to go here, but just let me briefly. Uh, somehow in the midst of the atmosphere with all the politics and everything in the, uh, in the country today, uh, we're trying to think we're going to change it from, from participating in the midst of all the, uh, all the noise that's going on. But we've got to come up to a higher place and a higher level and we've got to speak the life of God, the Word of God to it. Uh, so now as we speak the life and the Word of God to it, then can I tell you, then we can see these bones live. Those things that have dried up. Those things that seem and appear uh, to be dead. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Have you been in a service lately where, you, uh, where it seemed like everything was moving, but yet when you walked out, you still felt the deadness in, uh, in your spirit. But I'm going to tell you, uh, God's, going, God's calling the people up to another level uh, that we begin to come above the dryness, above the deadness, that we begin to come to that place uh, like John uh, came to so we can begin to hear what God is saying. Yes. Now, uh, go with me, if you will, to our, to our main scripture uh, tonight in uh, Micah 4 and verse 1, uh, beginning there, and he said, But in the last days, say, uh, it shall come to pass. Somebody said it shall come to pass. Yes. It shall come to pass when? In the last days. Now let me, there, there's some disputing today over what the last days are. Actually, according to Peter and according to the Scripture, the last days began there in, in Pentecost, and that was the last days beginning. However, I do believe there's some futuristic things to be manifest in these last days. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Now, it's important that we understand the difference. I believe he's talking about the, that last days in the, pro, uh, the prophet is, uh, talking about these last days uh, that... That we uh, that begin on the day of Pentecost, and some things begin to happen. He said, "In these last days, it shall come to pass that that the mountain of the house of the Lord." Now, what did he just say? There? He said, "The mountain." And in my English training, in, uh, in my grammar training, I put a that the mountain, comma, the house of the Lord. What is the mountain there? The mountain is the house of the Lord. If you've been around long, you've heard the teaching on seven mountains and, and uh, you know, one mountain of business, mountain and so forth, and, and it talks about all those things. But this particular thing is saying the mountain of the house of the Lord. So it's talking about the house of God. He's talking about you and me tonight. Yes. Come on, you're the mountain he's talking to. Hello, folks. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the house of the Lord shall be established where in the top or in a higher place in the mountains. In other words, it's going to be uh, established above all the other mountains. Now, I haven't got time uh, tonight to teach on all the mountains, but uh, mountains represent different, uh, different uh, levels of uh, uh, kingdom authority and so forth uh, in the earth. But be established at the top of the mountains and it, it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. Are you listening? Now I know there's a lot of uh, naysayers and a lot of people today that say the, uh, the glory time of the church is over. Come on. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. Because they come in meetings like this and look around and they only see a few. Come on. I'm going to tell you, uh, one thing COVID has done, I, I've, I've been around a lot of big crowds, a lot of big preachers, a lot of big ministries, uh, but one thing COVID has done uh, is taken a lot of people that have thousands upon thousands in their congregations, and you walk in and they're happy to have a congregation just like this. Hello, church. Why? Because people, uh, through one thing or another, we can say fear or whatever, or caution or whatever, and I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just saying uh, that, that, that for one reason or another, the, the, the enemy said boo and we scatter. 
Come on. See? His people. Look around you. His people. His people. Shall flow together. We may not agree on everything, but can I tell you the word of God said we're going to flow together. And can I tell you, I found out something in 54 years of ministry. Uh, that, that, come on. I found out uh, that, that very, very few times do you find people flowing in the same doctrines. Flowing in and agreeing in the same things. But, but I found out that you can take people with different doctrines and different persuasions and you get the spirit moving among them. Come on. On the day of Pentecost, can I tell you, you had, uh, you had 12 disciples there that was among that 120. And sometimes they disagreed. Some, come on. Sometimes they, they got upset with each other. But on the day of Pentecost, can I tell you, they flowed together. Because they weren't flowing in their opinion. They weren't flowing in their power. They were flowing in the power of the Holy Ghost. And see, tonight, God is calling us to come up to another level so we can flow in the power of the Holy Ghost. Can somebody hear me? Verse 2 says, and many nations. Somebody said, well, God's not interested in the nation. Well, look back. Look back for your Bible. Come on. God always dealt with nations. Some places I go, uh, mine are especially, uh, when we go in there, and in other places, uh, in, in Thailand, different places, uh, you can't go in there and, and start just trying to win uh, uh, individuals. You go into the leadership and you start you deal with the, the leadership. Now I don't I don't take it like that. I like to do it. I like to do the, the old fashioned way. Let's give an altar and individual whosoever will in come and we all come and, and cry and blood pray and you know <laughs> uh, whatever. Uh, but but uh, uh, it's become uh, very effective in some of those places, especially uh, places that are military. Uh, minded because you go into the camp, you approach the leaders, you win them to Christ, and guess what? The whole conflict, the whole uh, everybody follows suit and begins to come and get them and, and get their own relationship with God. See, so there's a higher level than we we thought about. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? See, God's trying to bring our attention. Uh, let's focus on the leadership. How to do it? Because if we can bring the leadership into the kingdom of God and into the place where they have a relationship with God, uh, can I tell you, we're going to begin to sway nations and not just uh, little pockets of, of people. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Uh, Jesus, uh, when we look at fishes, uh, whenever, whenever Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishes of men, he wasn't talking about people to people who fish with fishing poles. He was talking to people who were fishing with nets. Yes. 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 <laughs> Hello, folks. And you know what's significant about a net? You can't get nets that you can do, that, that, that you can, uh, you know, cast out and you can do it uh, individually. But the best fishing with a net is when you get one big enough uh, that it takes, it takes more than one to cast it out and it takes, come on. Remember that, 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 that boat sinking load uh, of fish that uh, Jesus said cast on the other side and they cast on the other side and they had to call other ships to come on, others to come on in and help us bring in this harvest. See, so that's a higher level than we went in. We, we went, yes. went into uh, the, being fishers of men with a fishing pole mentality. And God wants us to bring us into uh, a mentality where we are uh, fishers of men with a net. We, we cast out a net and we, come on, somebody hear what I'm saying. See, because one person's not going to be able to do this by themselves. We, we get some people sometimes that stand and say, well, bless God, the day of one man show is over. And sometimes that's because some of them are jealous because they wouldn't the one man show. So maybe what I'm saying. See, I'm going to do my part and I encourage you to do your part and together we're going to pull that net together and we're going to see a harvest. There will be a harvest. I can say that without having to, uh, without having to hesitate. There is a harvest that is crying out for somebody uh, to bring them to Christ. Can somebody love the Lord? And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go where? Up to the mount, mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. Come on. And he will teach us. Interesting, those three little words there come from one word 
uh, in, in the uh, in the uh, Hebrew, and it says, "Will teach us," and it means the, a variety of uh, words here. Uh, I'm not going to give you the whole thing, but I'm going to give you some of the uh, some of the words. He will cast. Think of that whenever it says, I'll make you fish as a man. He will teach us. He will cast us. What's he about to do when he comes uh, up, up to uh, 12 disciples and he says, follow me and I'll make you fish as a man? What's he about to do? He's about to cast them. Come on. He's looking forward to a day of Pentecost whenever he is about to cast them into the earth to begin to bring in, uh, come on, bring it in the sheep. <laughs> bring it in the sheep. So he's about to cast them into the earth uh, that they begin to bring forth uh, the, the, the harvest in the kingdom of God. Uh, another one is inform, which means teach, instruct, lay, uh, show, and then uh, one interesting one uh, is shoot. And there's a scripture, I don't remember exactly where it's at right now, uh, that talks about us being a, a, a polished rod. And he's talking about a poly, like polishing an a, a arrow that, with a bow and arrow. You know, the, why would you polish an arrow? Because the less air resistance it has, the more accurate it's going to be. Hello, sir. See, and sometimes you say, God, why do you keep rubbing on me? Why do you keep sanding on me? Because God wants everything that would keep you from being accurate as, as the Son of God, as a, a minister of the Lord, as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, whatever you're calling, or just a witness, He wants everything on you to be smooth so whenever He draws back and He shoots you into the earth, can somebody hear what I'm saying? Come on. He, yes, he's teaching us, but he's using that teaching how to do it to cast us into the earth. Come on, can I tell you, I sense another casting. Uh, not on the day of Pentecost, he cast 120 out of that upper room uh, into the earth, and they begin to change the world. And today, I'm going to prophesy to you that God is gathering a people today. I'm not talking about gathering into a big building, but He's gathering them unto Himself uh, because He's about to cast us into the earth. Uh, how do they get to begin to bring in another harvest for Him? Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Amen. And so, glory to God. So if you, if you feel the tension of the bow growing back, Come on. If you feel the tension of him setting you in that uh, in that string of that bow and you and you don't know God, you don't understand what, what, what are you doing, God? Well, uh, you, you just hold on, because God's about to shoot you forth into the earth. Hallelujah. About to shoot a people forth into the earth like he did that 120 in that upper room. And God is going to speak. God is going to show himself. Come on, they looked around and they were confused. I'm, I'm talking about all the people that uh, Staggering and, and, and come on, and they said, Oh, what's going on? These guys must be drunk, they're acting unusual. Somebody say unusual. Cheryl was talking about uh, Peter walking on the water. <laughs> and you know, I, I said something in, in Clayton last week uh, about uh, Peter walking on that water. You know, Peter understood, and he'd read, he'd read about God opening up the Red Sea when Moses stretched out his rod. He knew about Joshua whenever, uh, whenever he said, Joshua, just tell the priest to step in the water and, and, and I'll roll it back. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. But see, God was about to do a new, a new miracle that he knew the familiar with. Yes. Karen, we used to sing a, a, a song called He'll Do It Again. I love the song. But sometimes he won't always do it the same way. Sometimes there's a new miracle. He wants to... Come on. And somebody hear what I'm saying? Sometimes uh, he'll change the way he does it. Sometimes it'll be more spectacular. Now Peter, uh, Peter's stepping out on that water uh, and he said, I remember Moses. Whenever you, you, you roll out the Red Sea, you walked across, so they walked across on dry ground. I remember Joshua. Whenever you roll, roll back the water there. But now, uh, oh, look at here. All these uh, waves and all the storms coming through. But can I tell you, God will keep us on 
track and there's new miracles he's about to bring forth in the earth to show himself faithful. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. He's going to teach us. He's going to shoot us. He's going to cast us in the earth. And watch what it says here. I've got to explain this a little bit, okay? Of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. And he says something interesting in this next part. He says, For the law shall go forth of Zion. Now, in my Bible, God did not bring the Mosaic law forth out of Zion. Now, Sinai. Come on. Remember the story? Remember where we went, went up before God and, and, and stayed in such a glory and all? Uh, but, but anybody that touched that mountain went too high on that mountain down except for Moses. Come on. But see, the law, the Mosaic law didn't come out of Zion, but this, this prophet, prophet Micah here is saying uh, that, that, that the law is going to go forth uh, out of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, from the city of peace. Now the word law here, and I, you know, some people don't like it when you get in here and begin to do word studies and open up, uh, open up. I, it's important that we understand. I say, God, why don't you say the law come out of Zion? Whenever you know it come out. No. But see, the law he's talking about now is not the Mosaic law. It's the path of God. He's, he's showing us the path of God. And the, the word law here uh, means precept. His precepts. His statutes. I put in brackets here on my paper because what I see here is his revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. I mean, that's what the book of Revelation is. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not John's revelation. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And see, come up here. Because I want to show you something. I want to reveal to you something. I want to, to bring you into a place where you are hearing me and you are understanding me, not just with your head. See, there's, there's a cry inside of you and me tonight that's wanting to know Him. Like Paul, remember Paul? Nobody knew the, knew the law like Paul. He was a Pharisee. A Pharisee. He knew all those things. As Saul of Tarsus, he knew all. He knew the Scripture. He knew the law. He knew all that stuff. But he said, now he says that I may know Him in the power of His resurrection. There's something about God He didn't know. John Maxwell said, nobody cares what you know until they know you care. And that, that's on the surface, you know, we said that's good. And, and it is good because what people are looking for now is not your great revelation. It's not even your great, uh, your great charismatic personality. What God's looking for now is can you touch God with Him? Not just for them. There was a time when people were satisfied to get in our prayer lines. And I still do a prayer line if God says it. Uh, you know, no, nothing wrong with that. But see, the, the, there was a time they were satisfied to get in our prayer lines. But now they want to experience what it is for them to step in that place where they call on God and they see God move at their prayer. So I might hear what I'm saying. Where we can, where we can uh, join hands and agree together in our joint call. Why? Because uh, I, we or me or they are either one man put a thousand of life, but, but whenever we join together, something happens and 10,000 uh, begins to, to flee. Can somebody bless the Lord? And say, here we are today, whenever we're seeing on every hand the enemy uh, screaming out and trying to, uh, trying to, Keep us in fear and afraid, but and separated and divided. If God, if the enemy can keep us uh, from from coming into a deeper revelation, with uh, not deeper relationships, what I'm trying to say, uh, with one another, and uh, to that place where we can agree, can I tell you, uh, it can destroy the church. 
He can't do it because Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 3 in, in uh, Mark 4 says, And he shall judge among the people and rebuke strong nations afar off. Now watch the way he says it. He shall judge among the people and rebuke. Come on. Who is he talking about? He's talking about people in the house of God. He's talking about the church. But then he says, He'll rebuke strong nations afar off. And I don't think he's talking about, you know, we say, well, God rebuked China. God rebuked Russia. But I think it, this, uh, the far, uh, far off are those that are uh, far off from Him. Can you hear me? It's not that they're even thousands of miles away. But they are a great distance from God. Just like, just like you and me. If we get away from God, then guess what? We set ourselves up to come into correction. We set ourselves up to come into a place where He rebukes us. There's not, we look at that as a bad word. Rebuke's not a bad word. Rebuke is a time whenever it's, 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 it's correction. It's a little stronger correction than, than saying pretty please, but it's correction. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, can I, am I the only one in this place that ever had to have more than a pretty please? <laughs> See? And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Now, you can take that naturally and be, be easy in this day. I heard today on the 700 Club uh, that uh, China had been, the, the troops had all been uh, told to prepare for war. And I think it has something to do with Thailand and Hong Kong and trying to bring them back into uh, uh, into their covering or whatever uh, and all. And, and, you know, evidently they're not being their uh, swords into uh, plowshares and so forth. Uh, but, but I think it's talking about uh, more than that. I think it has to... It, the Scripture teaches us that judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. So first of all, anything we read in here, we think somebody else to do. That, that we, we say, okay, God, go ahead and do that uh, because it will make us comfortable. Would it be comfortable if we could live in the uh, if we could live in a, a, a country or in a world where we didn't have to worry about building up great military forces, wouldn't it be more comfortable? I'm comfortable because we got the best army in the world. Well, I'm not comfortable with that. Because if you've got the best army in the world, that means you're preparing to fight against the best that's coming at you. Somebody hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying anybody's any, any better, but I'm going to tell you that. This we don't need to get lifted up in our uh, in our conceit, and that's enough of that. But uh, but see, uh, God's talking sure is talking spiritual. He's talking about God changing. I believe that God's desire is to change this planet uh, and change the hearts and the minds of men and women uh, that that we don't study war anymore. I know uh, spiritual. You say ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study one no more. See, and the war, the war is gonna cease first of all in church, and then it's got to. I uh, hear some negative stuff about uh, trickle down economics, and you know, there's been a trickle up negative thing about fighting because of the sometimes the fighting that begin that begun in the house of God trickles up and begins to affect the nation. For all people will, will walk, this is verse 5, and let's get no, this back up. Uh, verse 4. But they shall sit every man under his vine. Somebody say, Jesus is the vine. Jesus is the vine. Are you satisfied to be connected to the vine? Are you satisfied with that new wine that comes out of the vine? 
That's your wonder. And every man shall sit under his line and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. Folks, I'm telling you, by reading the prophet and by speaking the word of God, that if somebody says, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I, we used to say, I read the end of the book and I know who won. You know, but the only thing about that is we're not comfortable until we really see the manifestation of what we did. Somebody hear me? See, but see, I, I don't know about you, but I'm going to sit under that vine. What's that old thing we used to say? I'm going to sit under the spout where the glory comes out. Amen. And right here's where it comes out. Whenever you're sitting where that new wine, that come on, the new wine is found in the cluster. Can you hear me? What's the cluster? It's all those that are connected to the vine. We've got great vines we, we planted in the first year. It was just a little experiment. We weren't expecting a whole lot. But the first year we had, we had grapes. And I got three more and we made a harbor and built it up and this past year just hanging down there and our biggest problem is keeping the birds off of them. Uh, and, uh, it looks like next year they're going to be hanging even bigger and more and got blackberry and, and all. And see, the best wine coming out of the cluster, they tell me. The scripture says it. The new wine is in the cluster. They tell me there's something about that cluster that if you take one grape off that cluster, prematurely before they're ripen, it changes the, the, the taste of the whole thing. The rest of it begin automatically to degrade, and begin to uh, go, you know, not, they don't go bad all at once, but they begin, they don't taste the same, they don't, uh, but if you take them together and you make the wine together out of that cluster, uh, the, the taste is right, the, 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 uh, the flavor's right, all that, they tell me. Uh, but I want you to know something, like we are the cluster. And I need you hanging on to that vine. We need to stay under that vine. Okay? Thank you, Father. Verse 5 says, For the people will walk everyone in the name of God. Name of His God. And we will walk in the name of the Lord our God. Now it's, it says the people walk in the name of this little God there. Uh, but it says that we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever. Now remember, this law, this teaching, this what, what he's setting forth now uh, is out of Zion. And it's the direction, it's the preparing to bring us forth as the body of Christ. How many is ready for that? I've been hearing it, I've been hearing it for years, I've been hearing it, been preaching it for years. But it's time that we say, okay, God, we are, you put us in the earth for a purpose, for a reason. And, and I'm tired of looking around, finding reasons why we can't do what God said we could do and why God can't do what He said He would do. But it's time that we say, okay, God, we're going to stand up in faith. We're going to stand together uh, in the cluster of the new vine and we're going to set under the vine and let God bring it forth. Now let me... Verse 6. In that day, somebody say that day, Saith the Lord, I will assemble. I, I, I didn't understand this out of King James when I first read it, but he said, I will assemble her. So that tells me he's talking uh, in the feminine now, and to me it signaled uh, the body of Christ. The bride of Christ, excuse me, the, the bride of Christ. Can somebody hear me? I will assemble her that halted. Said halted. And I looked that word up and it says leave. Come on. God's raising up the people with a limb. What do you mean? You remember Jacob when he wrestled with the angels? Whenever Jacob come, in, uh, come there and he grabbed hold of the angel and he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. God's not just going to raise up one man now. With a limb. There is a body of a, a bride, if you will, that has got a hole in him and saying, I'm not going to let you go until you bring me into that relationship that I call, that I know is in you, till I know you after the power of your resurrection. Uh, so he says, I assemble her that limp, and I will gather her that uh, is driven out uh, and 
and her that is afflicted, and I will make her that halted or her that lived a remnant. Come on, how are you going to know the remnant? They're going to have a limb. Jacob, what you what you living for? Well, God changed my name back there. I'm no longer Jacob. Because God changed my name back there. And I'm, I'm Israel now. Yes. I'm a contender with God now. Come on. And, 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 and your land didn't come from, from the wars, me, and all the, all, the, uh, all the things the world did. Your land come because you hang on to God whenever you didn't feel like hanging on to God. You hung on to God whenever all the odds were against you. You hung on to God whenever death was at the door. You kept hanging on to God until God began to Thank you, Father. A remnant and, and her that was cast off, far off, a strong nation, and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion. Come on, Mount Zion is the highest place uh, in Jerusalem, highest place of reigning. Can, I, can you hear what I'm saying? It's the highest place of reigning. It's the place where God ordained David to sit on the throne. Come on, and did you know you are the seed of David? Come on, why? Because Jesus Christ sits on that throne and He lives in you now. He lives and dwells in our hearts. And verse 8 says, And thou, O Tyler, the flock be strong. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Tyler of the flock, the stronghold of the daughters of Zion, the bride of Christ. Unto thee shall I come even the first dominion and the kingdom shall come to thy daughter, to thee, daughter of Jerusalem. Now, where, why dost thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask these questions in the scripture. Now, I want you to ask. Is there no king in you? And your answer should be, yes, there's a king in thee. Come on, because it's Christ in you. Is there no counselor? Hello, mighty counselor. You know who the mighty counselor is. For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Are you listening? What's he talking about? Coming to that time to bring forth. The pains of travail have taken you. In case you haven't noticed it, the church has been in a travail. Come on, somebody hear what I'm saying? What are we seeing? What are we seeing in this nation? Uh, where we're seeing and hearing the pains of travail because God is desiring to bring forth something new. In the book of Revelation, the, the, the uh, 12th chapter, I'm not going to preach on this, but I want you to see something briefly here. In the 12th chapter, there is a woman clothed with a sign. A woman uh, clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And I'm not going to go into the types of shadows here, but I want you to see something. He's talking about uh, a, a church that's pregnant. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Come on. Somebody say, Mind of Christ. Well, there's a lot more stuff in there, but I'm going to just say, Mind of Christ right now. And she, and she being with child. Somebody say, With child. Come on. She being with child. See, there's something begins to happen in your body whenever you're with a child. Hello, women, help me out. Whenever you're with a child, something begins to change. Something, but come on, and I'm going to tell you, there's a new thing beginning to happen in you. Right here we see the church, and, and she's hope with the sun, and there's a new thing beginning to happen, beginning to grow, beginning to come forth. And church, let's understand uh, that it may not be like the last thing was delivered. Come on. Uh, Mike and Molly got uh, five kids here tonight. Plus one. Plus one on the way. See, and we, we don't expect the next one to look just like the one that... Come on. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Why? Because it's a new thing. And God, uh, uh, God's about to bring forth some new, something new in the earth. And there is a harvest that 
we're looking at, and that woman is clothed with the sun. Can I tell you, uh, there's light that God wants to engulf us in and show Himself faithful. Thank y'all for being so quiet <laughs> Thank you, Father. I want to go back as I begin to get ready to close this. I want to go back to um, the first part again to the, to the word uh, teach there. The word where He casts us, where He shoots us. And let's look real quickly at Matthew, the 28th chapter. Because whenever Jesus chose those disciples, God said, I don't really believe His purpose changed when He chose you. Are you listening? Some say, well, what, what they were called to do, and whenever they, the, they died, the, the purpose they were called for died. But I don't, I don't see that because... Uh, Ephesians 4.11, God gave gifts unto men and imparted Himself uh, into those apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers in the earth. Uh, and, and then He poured Himself out in the body of Christ on the day of Pentecost. But it, uh, in, in Matthew 28, you know it from me, very familiar with you. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations. Now, the purpose in me making you fishers of men, they traveled three and a half years with me. They were taught. They were trained. They were discouraged. They were corrected and rebuked sometimes by me. But then, there came that time, you go forth and all the nations, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts, Acts 1, verse 8. And ye shall receive power. This is important. Hold, hold on to this. And this I, know it's, I, I know it's a little different tonight. But it says, and you shall receive power. Are you ready to receive? So I already got the Holy Ghost. I, I have to. But there's something ahead for us, folks. That there is a fresh endowment of power, if you will. Yes. I'm going to agree with Karen Wheaton. Some of you don't really care. But it won't look the same. Hello, folks. Why? Because if God has gathered unto Himself, I'm not talking about gathered in this building and gathered in any building, gathered in uh, you know, any great ministry or whatever, but He's gathered unto Himself a remnant. He's gathered unto Himself a people. And you know whether God's gathered you or not, whether God's bringing you to a new place in your life or not. And see, if He's gathering you, He is about to endure you with power for what He's about to do through you. Are you hearing me? He's about to endue you with anointing uh, that you need for this time. It's not going to look... Somebody said, well, why ain't God moving anymore? You know why we say that? It's because He's not moving like we once saw Him move. Once in a while I think, well, I'm going to go get me a tent. Get me a... Get back out there. So I said, well, you, you're older now. Maybe you're not doing it. Well, it's not because I'm old. Because I'm still stuck. <laughs> but it's because God, and, and that may happen. It may happen sooner than you think. It may happen right around here. But I'm just saying, whether it's in a tent or a building or out here on the street, it's not going to look the same because there's going to be a fresh anointing. There's going to be a fresh people. And God is about to endue us with power. Michael, God's about to do a, a fresh anointing, a fresh endowment of power to us. Come on, Danny. You're right in the midst of it, brother. 
Hallelujah. Because God, God stirred some things in your heart years ago. It's not too late and God's going to be Again, to deal with you because the remnant of God is coming together unto Him. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto, unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Doesn't sound like there's a limit on that to me. Can you hear what I'm saying? See, I, I still, during this pandemic and all the stuff, Whenever it looked like it didn't make much sense, our mission work, we've kept giving and sowing into our mission work and different things. And I'm uh, the brother in uh, Thailand that we work with uh, there does a, uh, he does it in the, the Akka language. And I got a report, uh, almost last week or week before, I got a report there that uh, through his uh, Facebook and YouTube uh, that is reaching across the border uh, into Laos and uh, people are getting born again. People are getting saved. There's uh, there's a revival and they're listening every week to that. They're going into Vietnam. They've sent people into Vietnam before the, the, the uh, virus came. They sent, sent people into Vietnam and taught those pastors that go deeper into the place and probably shouldn't say some of this because it's going to be on uh, YouTube and Facebook but uh, but see God's moving all over the earth and I don't believe he's going to leave America out to the church I don't believe he's going to leave, I believe there's a limit, remnant in America that is standing up for God and crying out God bring forth in us the freshness of who you are not a deeper message hear me now hear me now I am I am the first one to say I want, I want revelation. I want something, you know, that, that's, that, that's deeper than my raising or whatever. I'm the first one to say that. But can I tell you, I want more than that. I want a relationship with God that's going to stand whenever the storms come. I want a relationship with God that's going to cause me and you to flow together in Him. That gets us ready and draws us back like that polished arrow and shoots us at the target. The target is created. The target, I believe, is creation. The target, I believe, is, is your realm of, your sphere of influence. The people you know. See, one of the bigger downfalls, I think, of the church has been when we're trying to bring people under our doctrine instead of bringing people under Christ. And we forget the real teacher is not me just getting in the scripture and bringing out something that nobody else knows. In fact, if nobody else knows it, it throws a flag up to me uh, that maybe it's off because he speaks to his sheep, plural. Yes. And if he's not speaking it to anybody else, then I'm worried. Amen. But if I've got his word is established in the mouth of two or three witnesses, and I can bank on that. I can stand up and say, wait a minute, God's speaking something. All right. For about Romans, Romans 10, real quickly. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him and who have they have not believed? And how shall they believing in Him uh, in whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher, and how shall they preach? Except they be sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring good tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For as I say, Lord, who hath believed our report, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, that their sound, sound went into all the earth, and their words into the ends of the world. And tonight, how many know there's a sound? I still believe there's a sound. Yes. That God's desire is 
that it go into all the earth. What's the, what is the sound of? It's the sound of the abundance of rain. It's the sound of the anointing of God for this hour, for this day, for this time. Not those things that we've argued about in the past. But that move of God, and when I say move of God, I, I, I hold that back a little bit because uh, that's the only way I know to see, say what I'm seeing. Because it's beyond anything I've seen before. It's beyond the healing revivals. It's beyond, it's not living that out. We're not throwing those away. But it's beyond anything we've seen before because it comes from the depth of what God desires inside of us. Can you stand to your feet with me and let's just lift our hands tonight. And I know all over this house there's people that just want, and, and I just invite you with me right here tonight. My goal, my aim, my desire, my objective is that we reach deep, cold to the deep. That we reach to God and we say, God, let us know you. Not just know about you. Not just know even just scripture. We read a lot of scripture tonight. But God, we need to know the essence of who you are. For you said your word is spirit and it's life. And Father, in the name of Jesus, all over this house, if you have a need, if you need to be touched, in fact, why don't you help me out in this, in this house tonight? Uh, won't you turn around and pray? I know everybody in this place desires to know him in a deeper way. And I want you to turn around and take somebody by the hand or lay your hand on the shoulder or do something. And let's agree together. See, there's a higher level. There's a higher level. And it's not a me level, it's a we level. Father, in the name of Jesus, right here tonight, God touches spirit, soul, and body. God, as we feel your spirit moving in us, as we feel the power of God, God that is causing us to shed that old man, we feel the hand of God touching us in our thigh. And Father, we walk with a limb. We walk as a, as the bride of Christ with a limp, God, we have halted, uh, God, not because that we're uh, a cripple, but God, because you've made us whole by your touch, and you've made us become more and more fruitful uh, because of your touch, and out of our lives comes forth the Christ that's in us. Just like that woman with a uh, clothed with the sun, God, we're in her now. And we feel the pains to bring forth the Christ. God, we give you honor and glory for it tonight. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be sitting just for a moment, will you? Amen. Brother Dan Cole, it's good to see you. Would you give us a testimony?
uh, Philip Johnson, you know, his wife passed away. I played the Hammond organ at your funeral. And I said, I'm looking for a Hammond organ, uh, Brother Philip. And he said, uh, well, I've got one that I'm selling. So I uh, met him over at a church, and I said, I played it, same same model that I played with Mike Schreeder, uh, portable Hammond B200. And I've been, I said, I've been praying for one because I want to go around with Dad and get a trailer and go around with Dad sing those old camp meeting songs in church. So uh, I said, Philip, I said, uh, $400 down and 200 a month. I said, I, I don't have $2,000 right here. I could lay out for that whole thing. So, uh, he said, okay. And uh, we paid it off. And uh, January 2018, we launched the Sounds of Revival Tour. And this is uh, that, Brother Shambach's old song we hear. And so we got cranked that organ up. And, uh, nobody sings the old can't even songs like that. Does. And we have a project called Sounds of Revival. It's a live CD. Uh, that we did in San Antonio, Texas. And revival. I was in a revival out there. I led worship for a revival in San Antonio, Texas, uh, about 2001. They had a Hammond organ there, but I never played it because I was leading contemporary worship on my keyboard. And I said, well, I, I can play that, but I said, I can't sing those old King King songs like my dad does. And so I said, uh, well, for, tell them to come on out here. And that was not 2001. We came out there and we recorded a live CD, hour long, those old can't be songs out there in San Antonio, Texas. We were out there for about three months every night. God was moving. A South African preacher was there. So uh, we uh, launched the Sounds of Revival Tour 2018. We've been going to churches uh, and singing. Uh, uh, Dad's been leading those old can't be songs. He's still in good voice and still going. So we're going to, as long as he is in good voice, we're going to be. And when one of these meetings, we'll bring the Hammond in here and, and let Dad sing, sing a few of those songs for you. And uh, we, uh, we, it's just a joy to, uh, uh, I like the song, The Greatest Thing in All My Life is Serving You. The Greatest Thing in All My Life is Serving You. Sing it with me. I want to serve you more. I want to serve you more. The greatest thing, the greatest thing in all my life is serving